previously on The Game Changer. The apostles were with Jesus for three years. Jesus tutored these guys. God himself poured his spirit into them so that they could be Jesus' chosen, Holy Spirit empowered, thoroughly tutored, faithful witnesses of everything that Jesus said and did. People from all over the region turned the city of Jerusalem into a buzz of religious remembrance, celebration, and anticipation. They had come from all around making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the festival known as Pentecost. It means 50th. It celebrated the 50th day after Passover. Everyone from around the area converged on Jerusalem for this festival. Walking the streets, you could smell various food, you could hear different languages being spoken, and see people from all different areas. We zoom in from the grand view of a bustling and full city to Peter and his friends, all witnesses of Jesus, and they were waiting. As they heard the commotion of the streets, the din of the city growing louder by the day, they were waiting, waiting for Jesus to empower them like he had promised, waiting. Just like the whole nation that was in Jerusalem right then and there, the whole nation of God's people, they were waiting for the game changer. And then, all of a sudden, as they were all together, these witnesses, they heard a whoosh, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Their hearts must have picked up. Their eyes widened. Was this it? The very thing that Jesus promised earlier? Jesus giving his spirit to empower his witnesses? Oh, whoosh, wind. In Hebrew and Greek, the word for wind is both wind and spirit. Wind. The same wind that, that hovered above the waters at creation. The same wind that prophets had spoken of as the breath of God blowing over dry bones and filling them with new life. The same spirit that Jesus promised just in the last chapter. Whoosh! And as they hear the rushing wind, they see the glow above each person's head. Tongues of fire that came down on each one individually. Fire. The same fire that showed that God was a pillar guiding Israel by night through the wilderness. The same fire from God on Mount Sinai. The fire that hovered over the tabernacle as God dwelled with his people in the wilderness. Fire, like John the Baptist's prophecy that the Messiah would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Wind fire. God is in this place. And then Peter and the other witnesses start speaking in other languages. It's like they open their mouth and, hola, parev, guten tag, karibu, strasvercha, bonjour, mabuihai, konnichiwa, came out of their mouths. Only their pronunciation was perfect. <laughs> And the divided tongues as fire appeared to them and they rested on each of their heads and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, speaking in tongues is fascinating. The Bible has several passages about tongues and Jesus' followers have various points of view. And unfortunately, we don't have time for an in-depth study on speaking in tongues today. Then if you want to chat about it later, maybe you want to join us in our Zoom in chat session after the live services at 9 and 11 Gulf Standard Time. But in this passage, uh, Luke is clear with us that the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in other languages that people spoke back then. It's still a miracle. Think about it for a second. Mind blown. 
Uh, what if you were with your friends and, and you started speaking Japanese or Arabic or Korean? Uh, it may not seem spectacular because we hear different languages all the time in Dubai. But imagine not learning any of these languages and they start coming out of your mouth. <laughs> what an utter miracle, a supernatural movement of God. Uh, this was an exciting and exhilarating experience to point them to the game changer. Instead of separation and scattering, like when people built the Tower of Babel and God confused their languages. Unlike that, God is actively at work, bringing understanding and order through these tongues. <laughs> what a wonder. What a sign. The game changer is changing the game. And as the witnesses spoke with ver in various languages, a crowd gathered. But I bet at first it was just two or three curious travelers that became six, and the six became 60, became 60 became a couple hundred, and it doesn't take long for curious people to see a crowd and start peering in. As foreigners on a pilgrimage heard their mother tongue in perfectly pronounced grammar, God's miracle went viral. <laughs> Uh, the crowd began to explode. The crowd grew and grew and grew. And just like with anything that goes viral, there will always be trolls. <laughs> Although some people were amazed at this, other people scoffed and they thought that they were drunk. They said, oh, maybe these witnesses have had too much wine, you know? <laughs> Oof. And then Peter stands up. He stands up with the 11 by his side, <clears throat> clears his throat, and I imagine a hush falls over the crowd as they search for answers. Peter says to them, they aren't drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning. The promised game changer is at work. The promised game changer is faithful. After he reminds everybody that it's only nine o'clock in the morning, he quotes from, from a prophet named Joel. He, and this uh, prophecy that he quotes, he points out that God said this would happen six to 800 years ago. And he adds that the time has come and he's coming when God will rescue his people just like he promised. Peter says about the prophecy, that I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. When the spirit is poured out, the people will prophesy. And prophecy in scripture isn't looking into a crystal ball to see the future. It's simply uh, speaking under the influence of divine inspiration with or without reference to the future. And that's exactly what they were doing. They were speaking under divine influencing witnessing to others about Jesus. Peter continues by saying, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that's the point of what God is doing in this moment. God's rescue plan promised throughout hundreds of years and written in prophetic books has come to fruition. The game changer is faithfully continuing to renew humanity. He does what he says he will always do. What about you? Let's pause the story. Have you been changed by the game changer? Have you found peace, hope, life, purpose from God by trusting Jesus? If you think you're too far off or too removed from this story, know that this story continues in the hearts and in the community right now in 2021. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. All. Every single person who responds to God will be saved. Join our community. If you haven't been changed by the game changer, and this is news to you, you may be thinking to yourself like the crowd may have been thinking back then, how does this all happen? H how does this happen? I imagine the crowd leans in to hear more. Peter's speaking right from their own holy book. And he says that now, 
Is the time God's plan is unfolding? The crowd continues to gather, and I imagine even the people on the edges of the crowd are quiet so that they can hear more. The game changer is faithful. And Peter continues to talk about how not only is the game changer faithful, but he's going to tell them how the game changer is transformational. He says boldly and confidently, empowered by the Spirit, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definitive plan and foreknowledge of God, this Jesus, this promised one, the one who has done mighty works and wonders and signs, this one that's part of God's plan of rescue? Well, Peter says, you looked at him, you rejected him, and you killed him. Look at what Peter says. He says, this very promised one you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. <laughs> Peter goes on to say, but even you killing the game changer doesn't halt God's unstoppable plan. Not only is he faithful, but he is unstoppable. I wonder if the crowd had looks of anger or shock or denial after this harsh yet true accusation. Peter goes on to say, you tried to stop him, but he is unstoppable. Peter's sermon goes on. He says, God raised him up, look, loosing the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. <laughs> And then he quotes uh, a dearly loved and deeply respected uh, King David from their past. Uh, Peter brings them back to his main point. Peter says in verse 32, he says, This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. And then here's his big idea. Here's the one main takeaway, the kind of statement where you pause before, you take a deep breath, and you proclaim with great boldness and conviction, with feet firmly on the rock of Jesus. Peter looks out at the crowd, and without hesitation or stuttering, he shamelessly and assuredly witnesses. Let the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. I bet there was silence for a moment. The promised one that was to be worshipped and cherished and honored, they crumpled up and threw away. Even though the crowd had most likely grown into the thousands, I bet that you, it was so quiet that you could hear shuffling of a foot on the ground, but I bet that no one even moved. How is this crowd of devout God followers going to respond? Will the apostles first attempt at witnessing fail, proving them to be utterly powerless? Will they be run out of town, branded as shameful rejects from their community? Will they be labeled a fake or a fraud? Generations past have held on to the fact that the Messiah had not come Will the crowd vehemently deny that the very people Jesus came to rescue are the ones that rejected and murdered him? Will the crowd simply overtake the apostles and kill them? <sighs> Can you imagine the feeling in the crowd? I bet it was pretty serious, like hearing heavy news or realizing a deep and sobering truth for the first time. Hearts sinking into the floor, hands tingling with nervous energy. Oh, 
breath escaping their lungs. Now, when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart, deeply convicted, thoroughly changed, forever altered. And I don't know if it was out of desperation or hope or excitement, but they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? <laughs> Talk about a grand turnaround. The crowd heard about Jesus through the Holy Spirit and powered witnesses and see now that the faithful, unstoppable, and transformational game changer will renovate their hearts and their community. The camera that was focused on the witnesses last week in chapter one and started today with a close-up of Peter and his friend now zooms out to a wider shot of the crowd and eventually an ultra-wide shot of the whole world throughout history, the game changer and his witnesses are on the move. We see both a personal transformation and a wider angle community change. We see that there's an individual transformation. Peter says to the expectant crowd, you're asking what to do. They're cut to the heart. They're longing for direction. Peter says, repent and be baptized. Change your mind. Act differently. Shift the trajectory of your thinking and your actions and be baptized. Publicly align with Jesus and his community, every single one of you. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive not earn, not have to beg for later, but you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, uh, Peter bore witness and he continued to exhort them saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. <laughs> Look at the story unfold. We see the Holy Spirit empowering the witnesses, directed them to the game changer, and the Holy Spirit empowering the witnesses that started in chapter one zooms out to include any and everyone who believes in Jesus. Have you been personally transformed by the game changer? Have you committed your life to the truth of Jesus' death and resurrection to give you true forgiveness for your sins? If you're still trying to work hard enough to connect with God, or if you have strayed from <laughs> the path that God wants you on far off, today is the day. You type in the chat section, change me, Jesus. Members of our team are waiting to pray with you and answer questions that you may have. Come, join the Change to Jesus community, part of which is called Fellowship Dubai. We are a community of imperfect, forgiven people that are empowered by the Holy Spirit, pointing us to the work of Jesus for the glory of our Heavenly Father. Even our communities are transformed. The first Jesus communities were transformed by the game changer. If we read in Acts 2.42, we get just a glimpse of how these communities are changed. It says that they committed themselves, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Did you know that our 242 groups at fellowship get their name from this passage? Acts 242? Maybe you haven't experienced one of these transformed communities. Sign up right now for a 242 small group. We have brand new groups starting right now today for folks that have never been a part of a 242 group, and it's just a six-week commitment. Have a look. But, but look, the game changer even releases the selfish and fearful grip that they had on material goods and money. 
continuing on in verse 44, it says, And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. We've seen in this time of coronavirus, this time of hardship, we've seen God's people pull together to provide for one another. We'll have an update from our elder team chair at the end of this service to update you of where fellowship is financially. But you see that Jesus transforms. It's not our money. It's God's anyway. It's, it's his resources. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as anyone had need with glad and generous hearts. <laughs> and then look at verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved, those who were being transformed. And as they keep sharing, a fascinating plot twist happens, but you'll have to come next week for that. Until then, know that the faithful, unstoppable, transformational game changer is still at work today adding to that number through Holy Spirit-empowered witnesses. Imagine, imagine what God will do in and through us in the days to come. Go ahead right now and sign up for a 242 small group and find connection and encouragement as we live out this Jesus journey together, sharing with others. Imagine joining God financially in what he is doing around the world and seeing an impact of 10, 20, 100 times more than we could ever dream of or imagine. (sighs) Imagine with me smaller faith communities popping up all over the place throughout the week, talking about how the Spirit is at work in our lives. (laughs) How encouraging. Imagine those smaller communities multiplying into other communities, A pair of friends meeting over coffee turns into a group of six, of eight, of 16. Uh, One group becomes two groups, becomes eight groups. Wow, man, imagine 20 groups, 50 groups, 100 groups of light saturating the darkness. Wow. And whenever you leave the country where you now live, you take this message as an international witness to whatever community God plants you in. The game changer transforms lives, communities, workplaces, cities, and our world. Imagine sharing with friends, family, and coworkers who finally find security, peace, and hope in Jesus. And then God using you to walk with them as newly Holy Spirit-charged witnesses to others around them. You are empowered with the Holy Spirit. You bring the divine message of the King of Kings to prepared ears and hearts, bringing welcoming wayward children home to the Father. You bring faithful, unstoppable, and transformational good news of God at work. And so before we go out, let me pray for us knowing that we are empowered with the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much that you have empowered us. We thank you so much that you haven't just set us here alone, but that we have the power of the Spirit to transform lives. We lean on the power of the Spirit. We know he is the one that makes the gospel make sense. He is the one that makes anything about you uh, translate in our heads. Without him, we would be lost. We thank you for your son, our Savior, the one who died for sins and came back to life. And we pray that many others would find hope and rescue in him. Father, thank you that we get to be called your dearly loved children. And we pray these things, Daddy, in Jesus' name, through the Spirit. Amen. Amen.